full time here at Pierce Stadium and it has and it has ended Mayo 14 points Galway 13 Andy Moran was watching the game for off the ball today Andy you were feeling fairly nervous there at the end but Mayo they got through yeah, it was getting tight um, at the end, but you could see it. You could see it all through that the wind was picking up. Um, goal were just we were just staying three, four or two, three points up all the way through that second half. But all of a sudden, then it came back when we were three points. There was a massive part where we could have went four and Owen, Owen McLaughlin went for a goal power made a great save tipped around the post and we missed the resulting 45 they come up the pitch Shane Walsh scores a worldly of a point and then all of a sudden it's back to two and you knew then it was going to, it was going to come down to the last few minutes we still haven't seen the replay of the penalty or the penalty incident but uh, it did look outside from where we were where we, where we were sitting in the press box but uh, that's the fine emergence it is if a penalty is given there Shane Walsh against David Clark who knows how it could have finished up and uh, we could be looking at a very different result here today in terms of Connacht finals Andy where do you think this will rank was it was it like for me it was a proper dog fight out there I don't know for you if you felt the same but um, in terms of how would you assess this final overall yeah I think you, you've nailed it. it it was a dog fight with little flashes of brilliance in it if you're looking at Mio's best players you'd be looking at Stephen Cohn uh, the two boys in the full back line Owen, Owen, or Ushin and um, Ushin and Chris did really really well and then you're looking at Matty Rowan in midfield but you're looking at Matty because the ball he turns over for Killian's free the, the drive through he does at the start of the second half and punts one over the bar brilliant play and then you're looking at Brian Walsh coming on off the bench just getting two scores assisting an another one all of a sudden that's three points out of your total of five in the second half that's a massive return for a sub coming on and uh, we seen last night in the hurling same today subs coming on can make all the difference in these little tight games and that's what it that that's what happened today now where do i assess it in terms of kind of finals we're in november we're in the middle of winter there's no crowd here it, it was a decent game good competitive game for what the situation we're in and may all be very happy tonight going home with, with the result for for Mayo, when you look at their performance, Andy, where do they need to improve now? They're in an All Ireland semi final against either Cork or Tipperary, and look, they will go in as favourites. But speaking to James Horn earlier on, he feels there is a lot more for Mayo to improve on going into that game. Yeah, it's like everything within a team when you select a certain way of playing. It, it limits you on other sides. So if you look at Mayo with Connor and Matty in the middle of the field. Connor gives you a playmaking option, a kicking option, a running option, which is which is really strong, and he's doing really well in that format. But you, you, you know, the kickouts then become become an issue, and and, and, that, and that, that that's fine because the pros that James and Kieran McDonald and James Burke can see on the other side are way for them what, what you're losing on the kickout. So I, I think that's fine. Where else do they need to improve? It was great today to see the. There was an over reliance on Killian for the last couple of weeks on in terms of a scoring rate. It's great to see Tommy Conroy scoring three. Uh, it'd be nice to see Aiden get another point or two. But the forwards did quite well today in terms of Jeremy getting a point. Ryan O'Donoghue got a point. We mentioned Brian Walsh when he came on got a point. Killian got a few. Tommy Conroy got a few. That's a good return. And uh, you add in a point from Connor Loftus into that next week. A point from Lee Keegan, and all of a sudden, you know, instead of being at 14 points, you're up to 18, 19 points. I think that's going to be the key area for them. And looking at Galway, Andy. Look, I'm sure they're going they're going home there today, I think, and they easily could have brought this game to extra time and potentially could have gone on to win the game. We've seen at the end there Shane Walsh had a sideline, you know, if Morris Fitz had been behind that he probably would have went for went for a point. But like Galway, they had chances there at the end. Yeah, huge chances. I I I think the first free that Shane took was probably just outside his range with his left leg. Um, the second free he'd expect to score it. Um, just a player of his caliber and the kicks he's got all day, he'd expect to score that free. He taps over the next one, brings him to a point. But in terms of Galway, I think they've they found a new, they found a way. I think they're they're way more better going forward. They brought back in a tiny bit of the Kevin Walsh kind of structure in it today, which I think suits them slightly because what they have now they've a guy in Sean Kelly who can link the two, similar to what Keith Higgins used to do for Mayo for many a year coming from cornerback. Sean Kelly did that today. He was brilliant in the first half. They scored five points. He was. In, involved in three massive involvements in three of them points and then in the second half there you see who's the guy driving through try to get the last uh, get, try to get the last one who nearly got who got pulled down for the penalty Sean Kelly again which 
is brilliant for him because it, it'll give him huge confidence and he knows at this level now at cornerback he can play there and it gives Galway I, I think a structure moving forward with him coming over the back linking the backs to the forwards key thing for Galway Tom Flynn massive loss today Damien Comer not starting and when he came on not fit massive losses and they need to improve that and make sure that them guys can stay healthier for longer during the season You mentioned Kelly there cornerback for Galway he was outstanding going forward I just want to get your thoughts on this Andy you have a defender like that Kelly you, 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 know, Lee Ke- you know Lee Keegan Paddy Dirk and so attacking minded as a forward yourself when you're looking at when you're coming up against a defender like this, what is it like? Like, how do you go about your game when you know these lads are going to be bombing it so so much up the field? Yeah, it's a team. It's a team thing. Like me in my later years playing football, like I I couldn't do that. I couldn't run after the even the likes of the Marco Shays, the you know these guys. I couldn't do it. Mick Fitzsimons. I, I couldn't go after them. Even Sean, if I was Marco Sean Kelly there today, I couldn't do it. So, what was great for me is that Jason Doherty. Like I don't an awful lot to Jason Doherty as a footballer because he used to cover runs for me, he used to do extra work for me. Kevin McLaughlin the same, and the same with Killian to keep us high up the field. So it's a team kind of format. Today Mayo had to move Killian and Aiden out the field at times to get the ball in, so that allowed Kelly to be 20 yards further up the field. Where if you look on the other side, when Shane Walsh went inside into the full forward line, that moved Paddy Durkin 20 yards further away from our forward line, which cut out his run slightly. So it's just it's a team kind of set up more so than a, a what would you call it more than an individual one on one kind of battle. And as we said now, All-Ireland semi-final for Mayo. They're one step further to where they want to be in All-Ireland final. But Andy, what what do Mayo need to do now between now and then? You know, obviously we don't know, there might be one or two knocks there, but what do they need to get right? What do the Mayo supporters need to do now? Because obviously hype is going to go up big time in the county. Yeah, so we, I suspect that there was one or two fellas there, one or two of our big players that were carrying knocks today. Um, you can nearly see it in the warm-up. You've had four weeks in a row, this was the fifth week in a row, but you could see one or two of them there even in the before the game even started struggling with the, the runs and stuff like that. So I suspect one or two of them had knocks. So the Key thing is recovery here. Get the bodies right. Uh, Mark Gallagher will lead this or lead the physio side of it. He'll get the he'll get the bodies right and get them flushed out. I'd say a few of them won't train this week, and then we'll kind of move on and kind of assess the monster final next week. What a monster final it is! Cork Tipperary, I think it was three thirteen to twenty one points in the league. So it's going to be no walkover for people. Look at the Cork result against Kerry and think, yeah, Cork are going to be in an All Ireland semi final. Going to be mo- Tipperary of different ideas. They'd fancy this big time. A Reardon back from Sydney Swans. This is it, it's brilliant to see and uh, we're going to see what, what can Cork back up that performance next week that's the key thing for Cork and then you can analyse it then from oh, where they need to go out and kind of beat either one of the teams moving forward but what do Mayo have to do on their own thing they need to improve everywhere the, the, the back line needs to improve at times there even that last ball bit naive got caught in under the break big break came from the goal boys and Sean Kelly was true you know so there was certain areas of the game that they need to improve but I, I think they'll be quite happy I think if you were going to look at that as a team performance today, I, I, if you're James Horne, of course there's areas you want to improve. But you're coming up to Pierce Stadium here, you're getting a one-point win, you're leaving as Connacht Champions. You're the first Connacht Championship since 2015. When that J- team under James Horne goes to Cork Park, there's always an air of confidence about about them. Um, Aidan will get a lift from Lee will get a lift from Killian will get a lift from and these young fellas. You've seen Owen McLaughlin there in the last 10 minutes, quite for 60 minutes, but the last 10 minutes, when they all needed someone to break the line, when they needed someone to push on, he was the guy that went and done it. And I think the young fellas will kind of just drive them on and the older fellas will get a lift and who knows? Um, who knows what can happen in the next three, four weeks? We've seen a lot of good scores there today between Shane Walsh, Brian Walsh. But one of the scores of the day, before the game even started, Kieran MacDonald, he still has it, he still has it, Andy. You know, maybe we could see him in this 26 yet before the championship is over. Well, if the truth is to be known, Dahi wasn't looking at it, and I said, Dahi, record this. And uh, you got a good record, and you got the one that went over. So if McDonald is watching this, you can thank uh, you can thank Dahi for putting the one that he scored in it. But a lovely score. Uh, yeah, but it, it, was, it was great to see it before the game. It kind of gave all the kind of media guys here a bit of uh, bit of life before the game. But uh, yeah, funny, to, funny one to see. Well, there you go, Mayo are now Connacht champions, first time since 2015, and are into an All-Ireland semi-final where they will take on Tipperary or Cork. From, from Pierce Stadium, it has ended. Mayo, 14 points. Galway, 13. <laughs>